Thanks for tuning in to the Prime Bookseller Podcast, the bi-weekly podcast discussing all things Amazon bookselling. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Prime Book Selling Podcast. I'm Eric, and we are back. We actually have a question for this week, which I appreciate anybody that submits questions. We don't get them very often, but we do get questions here and there. And one of these questions, I think this is uh, this is an interesting question, and I'm going to forewarn uh, everything I'm going to tell you right now is purely based on not very much actual Evidential, evidential research, most of it is just my opinion. But the question is, do you wait to ship like 100 items versus like 20 items at a t- time? I guess I'm trying to figure out if the more I ship in multiple boxes, is it overall cheaper? So now I have never run, cl- cl- um, I have never run data analysis to figure this out. I've never worried about this before, but I do believe I have a pretty good response to this, and I think that if anybody were to sit down and actually do the hardcore analysis to see if I'm right, they'd probably find that this is the way it works. So um, the biggest question, so first of all, I the, the question was not clear in this, but I assume by the way the question is written that this is talking about shipping items to Amazon. Because obviously, it's very rare that if, if you're a merchant fulfilled seller, you should know this. It's not very common that you have somebody write 20 items or buy 20 items or 100 items at a time from you. Not to say that it's not possible, it just doesn't happen very often. So I'm assuming that this reader, this listener is actually inquiring about shipping in FBA items. And this is what I tell people with FBA items. So Typically, my understanding of the way the fee structure, so when, and I'm using this knowledge base off of the fact that you're going to be using Amazon partner shipping, which if you're not at that point of using Amazon yet, but that you've never shipped in FBA items, basically what Amazon partner shipping means is that Amazon has a negotiated agreement with UPS to provide labels to people to ship this stuff in, and it's quite, uh, it's quite cheap. And the prices vary. I'm not going to go into the different prices because it really depends like where you're in, where you're located and then where the items are going. So if it's farther away from you, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be, if it's less than you, it's going to be cheaper. So that obviously you can see there's a big variance there in, in the fees that you could potentially pay on the shipping cost. But it is compared to shipping anything else. Believe me, it's, it's relatively cheap. And, but, so the question is, is should I, should you wait until you have a hundred items to ship in or should you ship in, is it okay to ship in 20 items at a time? And I think the best way I would give an answer to this question is just based on look at, it's not about the number of items you're sending in, but it's about the boxes. So basically how I would explain this is, is that if you are going to ship one item to Amazon in one box to sell, you are going to get hosed on shipping fees, okay? So, because generally, basically, what's going to happen, let's just say you only have one book and you're sending it in. Well, that book is probably going to cost you between 5 and $6 to get to the Amazon warehouse. And that's just simply because the way I, I would explain it, and I don't know if this is the way their fee structure is set up, but I assume it is, is that UPS has a flat rate for a box. So they're, if you ship in one box, one item, the, the lowest they're going to go on that is, let's just say $6. So you're going to pay $6 for that. And, and... Whether whether or not whether or not you have a box of ten pounds, let's just say a box of ten pounds is six dollars. Whether you have one item in there or fifteen items in there, it's going to cost the same because they're charging. They're going to. It's a light enough box that they're going to charge you basically. There's a fee per box. So basically, what happens is the bigger the shipments you make, the cheaper the the shipping should be. But with that said, if you ship in something that has 12 boxes, 
or just has one boxes, I f- I would tell you that the fee should be very similar. They it might it it probably will alter if you really ran the test it, that a, a little bit from box to box. But as long as you can like a normal box can get fifteen books, fifteen twenty books, depending on the size of the books, in you can get into one box. If you can do that. I would just send in, you'll see that the rates are cheap enough on one box that it's okay to just send it in one box at a time. But do you probably save a little bit more money the more you get into a shipment? Yes. So so basically the moral of this story is to try and get your shipments as big as you possibly can. But, But as long as you're filling up a full box, I wouldn't hesitate to to send it in, you know, because, and especially in the situation of most of you are going to have your account. I don't know that if we talked about this on this podcast yet, but Amazon recently put in this thing where now you have three different tiers of, of FBA inventory coming in. I can't, I think they call it restock fees or something like placement fees, I think is what they call it. And Basically, the highest tier is the most expensive you pay on every item that comes into the warehouse, but they send it to the fewest warehouses. And then you can go all the way down to the third one, which has no fees associated, but they send it to a ton of different warehouses. Um, I generally tell Amazon booksellers, pick the middle tier. You're going to pay fees. It sucks. I know. But but it is way more it's probably more cost effective than having them send three books to 13 different warehouses around the country. And that's literally what happens. You build a shipment of 200 books, 187 of them will go to one warehouse and then they'll, they'll break through, break them off into threes and send three to two different warehouses around the country. And it's just, it's goofy. So because of these fees and the way they break it up, you might have stuff that you're sending in. You're sending in partial boxes. It's just going to happen. And the, with those, I typically tell people you just got to suck it up and send them in. Um, kind of look at it as you know, the that shipment that had, had 187 items in it is going to offset the cost of the fact that you're getting screwed on shipping in those three items. But but the point is, is you do want to try and get your shipments up as big as possible because I do feel like that that is going to slow down the you know that is going to reduce the shipping costs slightly but I would not tell you that you need to wait until you have 100 books before you ship it in if as long as you have a full book get it in there because it's probably better for you to get it in there and get those books selling than to wait until you have 100 and um and you know and then leave books sitting around for months that aren't selling be- while you're waiting to get a hundred. So, so my, my advice in this situation is to make sure you're at least filling up a full box in almost all situations. Again, like we talked about with the inbound placement fees and stuff like that in the Amazon shipment splits, there's going to be times where Amazon is going to quote screw you because they're going to tell you that you have to send three books to California when you're in New York just why we why they need those three books in California we don't know but that's just what Amazon does so but try to keep them as big as you can but I would tell you that as long as you can fill a box um you can you're you're fine the other part of this too is is in this I don't know if this is a huge effect on things any I think it still is because I think their algorithm still works weird with this is we typically try to keep our batches under 200 bucks and the reason for that is is because you get start getting weird stuff after 200 200 items I've seen 200 items where Amazon will then take and they'll basically split the one shipment into two shipments so let's just say you have 200 books. They say, we're going to send 180 of these to the warehouse RDW. That's just the code they use for warehouses. So we're going to send it to RDW. I don't even know if that's a warehouse code. I completely made that up. But we're going to send 180 items to RD, RDW or whatever I said. And then, but let's just say you had 250 total items. 
So of the 200 items, they might send 180 to RDW. Then what they're going to do is they're going to look at the other 50 and they're going to say, well, those should go to RDW too. But we don't want to put them in this that shipment. So we're going to create a second RDW shipment. So now notice this, that, that they're breaking it apart into two shipments, but it's going to the exact same place. And you will see this all the time. And the reason why I try to avoid that is just because, I mean, like, I'm not too worried about it if it's 50 items because whatever, it costs a little bit more to ship because it's not all grouped together because I do believe that there's a discount if, you know, all of the labels are put into under one grouping, basically. I, that's kind of hard to explain better than that, but... But as long as there's 50 books going, that's fine. But uh, let's just say you did like 203 items and they spent sent 200 to, to the one RDW shipment. And then they created a second RDW shipment that was three items. That's really stupid. So again, we just try to keep our batches under 200 items to try and alleviate that. Because from what I, I have seen, it seems like at around 200 items, Amazon starts going crazy and doing weird stuff like that. Um, typically, we will go over 200 items a little bit because we typically know that the way we have our accounts, our accounts set up is that these items, not all 200 of them are going to go to one shipment. You know, probably 150 of them are going to go to one big warehouse and then the other ones are going to get split off into smaller warehouses. So, but short end of this whole episode to answer this question is, is that I would try to make your batches as big as possible, but as long as you can fill one box, it's okay to send that box in. I think the cost of shipping is going to be minimal to you. That increase over making them bigger that it's probably better to just get the items in there and get them up for sale. Try to keep your batches under 200 items or play around with it. Use a number that makes sense to you. It could be like 225 items because just remember, unless you have yourself set at that top tier, they are not going to split. They're more than likely going to split any batch you create into multiple shipments. So if you have 200 items, you're not going to have one single shipment that's over 200 items because they're going to split in into multiple shipments. But the key to this is, is that you want to keep every single shipment under 200 items so they're not doing the thing where they split the same warehouse into two different shipments, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. I know that's a little confusing, but maybe once you start creating, if you're confused, create shipments once and I think what I'm talking about will make a lot more sense and as always if it doesn't make sense we have this beautiful email address we have this beautiful email address sales at kingsridgemedia.com where you can send me an email and I'm happy to clarify anything for you so I'm going to wrap that up with this question um again we do have those sourcing opportunities. So if you are looking for more books for your business or you're just looking to dabble your toes into a new new method of sourcing, uh, check out our links in the show notes or jump over to Kingsbury's Media. Check those out. I'll say the email address again. You can email me with any questions, concerns, anything like that at sales at kingsburysmedia.com. And we will be back next week with another podcast. And I want to thank everybody for their continued support. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the Prime Bookseller Podcast. Join us for the next episode as we discuss all things Amazon bookselling. selling.